volunteers to help you in South Carolina, count me in. I'll be happy to serve you again. Thank you. Colton Smith from Aquila, Texas. I wanted to read that to you. And he P.S. it by saying, sorry about rambling so much, but he said, I've been out, it's 1.30 in the morning, I've been out putting out signs, 400 signs. That's what it's all about, folks. That is what this has all been about. And I just want to say thank you to, to everyone who's come and volunteered and worked and made uh, the most incredible experience for uh, myself and, and for the woman that I've been so blessed to have had by my side all these many years, for uh, 30 years of my life of wedded bliss. There's not anybody that's fought any harder, that's been a greater uh, partner than my wife, Anita, and my sweetheart and the love of my life. And we're blessed tonight to, to be standing on this stage and, and representing the, uh, the state of Texas and, frankly, representing America. And I think the values that are so important to, to our country. And to be here with my children, uh, Griffin and, and Meredith and Sydney. Um, you know, when I began this campaign a little more than four months ago, I didn't do it because it was a lifelong ambition to be the President of the United States. Uh, I did it because our country's in trouble. Many of you have heard the story of us, Nita and I, sitting on the couch and talking about that uh, um, this wasn't my purpose in life, but our country was in trouble. And it was my duty to serve my country one more time. And, uh, and this campaign's never been about me. Uh, it's about a movement of Americans who, are, who see our country that, that's really not on the track that most of us want it to be on. Fifteen trillion dollars of debt, some 50 million Americans that are on food stamps, 13 million of us, 13 million of our, our fellow citizens that are out of work. They don't see a Washington that's willing to make hard decisions to help them, to get them back on their feet again. They're looking for people to make some right decisions. They're looking for someone that'll stand up and give them hope that we can get this country back on track again. But with the voters' decision tonight in, uh, in Iowa, uh, I've decided to return to Texas, yeah. assess the results of, of tonight's caucus, determine whether there is a path forward for myself in this race, I believe that this is the greatest nation on the face of the earth, a nation that I was blessed to serve as a pilot in the United States Air Force, a nation that has been and will continue to be a beacon for freedom around the world. And Dan Moran, you, Marines like yourself, Soldiers that are serving still today and airmen, sailors around the world, you've made every minute of this worth it for ourselves. And with a little, pr a little prayer and, and reflection, I'm going to decide the best path forward. But I want to tell you, there has been no greater joy in my life than to be able to share with the people of Iowa and of this country that there is a model to take this country forward, and it is in the great state of Texas. God bless you, thank you all for being with us today. Governor Rick Perry of Texas announcing tonight that he is suspending his campaign and returning to Texas. Uh, before tonight, Rick Perry has never before in his entire life lost an election. He says he is reassessing his campaign. I should be precise in the language that he's using. Reassessing his campaign, returning to Texas. His campaign had previously announced that there would be a full slate of events for him tomorrow in South Carolina. But he says that uh, where his ticket out of New Hampshire goes tonight, out of Iowa goes tonight, uh, is back to Texas. You've been watching uh, MSNBC's live coverage of the Iowa caucuses tonight. Um, at this point, it is still too close to call between Mitt Romney and Rick Santorum. Uh, right now, at this hour, with 96% of the vote in, there is only a 113 vote difference between Rick Santorum and Mitt Romney. That's just incredible.
Here's the six pan, here's the six way result. Rick Santorum, 25%. Mitt Romney, 25%. Ron Paul, 21%. Newt Gingrich, 13%. Rick Perry at 10%, who again we just heard is reassessing his campaign and heading home to Texas. And Michelle Bachman placing sixth at 5%. Michelle Bachman not announcing tonight that she would be suspending or reassessing or doing anything else with her campaign except heading on to the next contest. Listening to uh, Rick Perry there tonight, um, I'm not sure that it was a foregone conclusion that he would be reassessing his campaign and heading back to Texas if he uh, if he placed at this placed this far down uh, in the standings, but it was not a surprise. Uh, the question is what the implications are of this. With Rick Perry out, does anything else move? Well, something has to move. He's got votes that have to move, but I think more interestingly, tonight. the money. There's a lot of Rick Perry money out there, and he has the capacity to raise a lot. There's a lot of fundraiser interest in him. Where do they go now, Steve? Where do those people who wanted to pump money into Rick Perry go? I think it's an open question. Uh, you said earlier that he's a career politician, a professional politician. His endorsement will go to the person that he thinks is going to win. So I don't think you're going to see Rick Perry jumping on anybody's bandwagon immediately. I think he's going to go back to Texas. I think that Rick Perry is going to be focused on rehabilitating his image. I think Rick Perry is going to be focused on trying to break through telling the Texas story, which is a story that there's a lot of good to tell, but never he had never really had an opportunity to tell in this campaign. But uh, he has a capacity to raise a lot of money. Texas could be an important primary down the stretch, so I suspect we've not heard the last of Rick Perry in this race as a consequential figure. Does uh, Romney reach out to him? I think absolutely. Uh, they were both governors. They served at the same time. They know each other. Um, uh, you know, certainly uh, Governor Perry probably got to know Senator Santorum during these during these debates. But he, but he's known, I, I would imagine, Governor Romney for a lot longer. And it will be interesting to see how it all I, shakes. I got to say, the that. last time we saw Mitt Romney reaching out to Rick Perry, it was to go like this well, and half patronize him, yeah, half hey, threaten yeah, him, yeah, yeah. and then make the ten thousand dollar bet. And it looked like he wanted to rip the guy's head off every time yeah. they were near each other it, on a stage. It, it, as much as Perry was criticized throughout all of this, can we say he saved the best for last? That was the best he's been yeah. uh, on the stuff. Well, yeah. Other than the letter. <laughs> other than the long think, letter. He said, yeah, I'd like to read you this letter. letter. And Rev. Allen that, that, rejected that, that, why. Yeah. Yes. But I, I think that the longer Perry waits to make an endorsement, the more it won't matter because I think the people that are supporting him are going to start moving wherever they're going to move. They're moving tonight. And, yeah, a lot I, of think and, and a I don't lot think of they're them, waiting for Rick Perry to get Yeah, and I think a lot of them are anti-Romney people, and they're going to probably go to Santorum. I think that uh, he, he, I think he will have an impact in a Texas primary, but I think his supporters, I think, are not, ne I, I can't see any major chunk of them going with Will Admit Romney. Right now, let me just point out that we're now up to 97% of the vote in at this point. Still too close to call with 97% of the vote in. Look at the vote difference between these two candidates. Rick Santorum in the lead, if you can call it that, by 37 votes. As Chuck Todd was pointing out earlier tonight, there is no recounting in Iowa. There is no provision for a recount. The way this works is that the Iowa contest is to allocate delegates, but the delegates are not allocated tonight on the basis of exactly what happens here in the Republican caucus. That, in fact, happens at the convention, which is a ways down the road. It's part of the arcane process by which Iowa gets to hold on to being first in the nation, but they've got those delegates to allocate. Those, allocate, those delegates will be allocated at the convention. They did not bother to set up a recount process now for what is sort of a non-binding process that everybody sees as very important anyway. Iowa, there's a little bit of smoke and mirrors in terms of what this means. Mostly it is about momentum heading into New Hampshire and the rest of these contests. But there will not be a recount, and we're talking about a few dozen votes at best between these two frontrunners right now with already 97% of the voting. You know, Rick Santorum has delivered a stunning defeat to money okay. politics. Over $10 million spent between Ron and Perry in Iowa, Santorum spent a half a million dollars. He yeah. spent one third of what Newt Gingrich spent. This guy spent less than anybody else there. This is a win for Santorum. Now that we're down to 37 votes, now that this is going to be a difference of, of uh, maybe 100 votes between these two, it doesn't matter where Santorum comes out on that. This is a Santorum win well, and a big let me Let me put that hypothesis to Chris Matthews at the Polk County Convention Center in Des Moines. That is, we're looking as this get down to the last couple dozen.
dozen votes and no recount ahead. At this point, do you chalk this up almost as a, I guess, a de facto win for Rick Santorum, no matter what happens with these last few votes? Yeah, and I think we have to look at the pattern of the last, uh, well, six months now since uh, June, where we've had these uh, winners of the week sort of thing going on. Every week or two, there's been a new front runner starting, you know, go back to uh, Michelle Bachman. She had her day, and of course, uh, Donald Trump had his day. And then later on, we saw, the, we saw uh, Her uh, Herman Cain, and then, of course, uh, uh, more recently, uh, and Ginrich, and now, just at the speck, just at the split of time, the time you wanted to be top, along came the guy that was always in the back of the pack and never got nicked, and that was Santorum. And now he's had his timing just right. And I guess the question is, is this going to be one of those years where the Republican Party just isn't stable, where it doesn't reach a point of stability, where week by week they see who's on front and then they go against that person? The Tea Party people don't like leaders. I've noticed that over the last couple of years. They, they like to attack leaders. The smartest of the Tea Party people lie back. They don't play leader like uh, Dick Armey. They're smart enough to not try to be leaders because he recognizes, I think, that they don't like leaders per se. Now we see Santorum up there as a leader for a while. The question is, will they go after him the way they've gone after all the previous people who have come up to the fore and assume the role of leader? I think there's something fundamentally horizontal about the uh, the Tea Party and the right wing. They don't want a leader. I'm gonna th I have to take it, throw it over to Michael Steele to challenge, and maybe you'll challenge that. Is your party in a period of complete instability now where, almost like the French Revolution, where you put your head up and say, I'm the leader, you get <laughs> chopped off. off. Yeah. No, not, I don't think so. And I think that, uh, you know, this is not about the Tea Party having a decision on who is the leader or not the leader. This is a real vote that was taken by independent voters right. and, and Republican voters in a, a representative process. I think this is the first time, despite what you just said about the you know, who's up, who's down, this is the first time the voters have said, this is who we want. I mean, everybody else has kind of been the accidental candidate who's kind of fallen into the leadership role because someone else failed. This is the first time the voters have said, this is who we want. And America better but pay attention. But look who are two of the top three Tea Party people. It, 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 but that's, that's, it, that's not the point. The point is that these voters are making the decisions. Okay. This is tonight where the voters are saying, we're going to have a say in who comes out on top, not the pundits, not the predictors well, in Washington. Is this a stable leadership we're looking at right now, this well, we'll order see. here? We'll see, we'll, see what hap we'll see what happens. Are you betting on it staying stable? I, I, I will bet on that, simply for this reason, because the voters now are going to have much more sway in this than they've had up to now. The, yeah. No one's taking a vote until tonight. So let's see what the voters decide when we get to New Hampshire and South Carolina. I think we can predict the continuation of this week-by-week -week struggle on who's king of the hill, Rachel, and I think it's very much a pattern now nobody stays on top of that hill it's like when we were playing as kids for more than a couple of weeks it seems and now Santorum's going to have to hold his position as king of the hill Chris we'll thank you long. Chris thank you I, I had even heading into tonight before uh, this showing in Iowa the Gallup organization had described the volatility in this year's Republican race as the most volatile race the Republicans have had since 1964 when they picked Barry Goldwater as Lawrence was aptly pointing out earlier tonight the last time they picked a first-time presidential candidate that was before we saw Rick Santorum coming from behind uh, to win in Iowa NBC's Kelly O'Donnell is at Santorum headquarters with more on why we have not yet heard uh, from Senator Santorum tonight and what we might be waiting for. Kelly? Well, there has been an unusual situation here, and one of the supporters, aides to Senator Santorum, came up and said to the crowd in a bit of a humorous tone, we have an etiquette problem here, saying that Governor Mitt Romney has not called Senator Santorum and the vice versa, and that it is tradition that the winner go last. So the crowd has filled the void with singing Amazing Grace, chanting things like We Pick Rick, singing patriotic songs. Many people here thought it would be a much earlier night. There are a lot of small children in the crowd and a lot of enthusiasm here for a candidate and uh, now this is the supporter we were talking about so we'll see what happens here but they have been talking about the surprise here and when you were talking about what happened with Rick Perry tonight I can tell you many of the people who have supported Rick Santorum have told me that they really liked Rick Perry and they really like Michelle Bachman and with the fates of those two campaigns tonight more clear many of those supporters seem to be coming over to Rick Santorum especially those who are motivated by values voting Christian principles those sorts of things uh, the gentleman seems to be saying we're only a 
short time away from Senator Santorum coming forward. I can tell you he had not prepared a traditional speech. Aides say he's been thinking about this for a while, wanting to say thank you to Iowa.